And I've chosen as a subject, why did God give us His law? And by the way, to be more uh, precise, why did God give Israel the law? He didn't give them to the Gentiles. He gave Israel the law. And the law, of course, when we think of the law, we think automatically of the Ten Commandments. And that's the bulk of the law. But there were hundreds of commandments the Lord gave to Moses to give to Israel to govern their lives. All kinds of laws. They had dietary laws. They had moral laws. Spiritual laws, more than anything. Laws of morality. Uh, a lot of good laws. And we studied in Sunday school this morning about the Pharisees who uh, memorized the laws and professed that they kept those laws. But in Romans chapter 7, let's begin reading with verse 7. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. Nay, I had not known sin but by the law. For I had not known lust except the law had said, Thou shalt not covet. One of the last commandments given. But sin taken occasion by the commandment wrought in me all manner of concupiscence. For without the law sin was dead. For I was alive without the law once. When the commandment came, sin revived and I died. Now what's that saying? Let me break it down to you. There was a time in your life where you were not accountable for your sins. Little children are not accountable. I was alive without the law once, but then the commandment came when I realized that I was a sinner. Sin revived and I died. In the commandment which was ordained to life, I found to be unto death. For sin taken occasion by the commandment deceived me, and by it slew me. Wherefore the law is holy. And the commandment holy, and just, and good. Then we go to Galatians 3, verse 21. Is the law then against the promises of God? God forbid. For if there had been a law given which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law. Nobody could keep the commandments and be saved, could they? Verse 22, but the scripture had concluded all under sin that the promise of faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up under the faith which should afterwards be revealed. Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster, school teacher, to bring us unto Christ that we might be justified by faith. And in verse 10, For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of law, the law to do them. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident, for the just shall live by faith. And the law is not a faith, but the men that doeth them shall live in them. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law. What was the curse? It was death, wasn't it? Being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. God gave us his written law 
in the form of the commandments to Moses to give to his people. Previous to that, they had gone uh, hundreds of years without a written law. But on their exodus from Egypt to Canaan, as they complained about everything, God called Moses up into the mountain to give him the written law. Y'all remember? And he was there for 40 days. But they had said, all you tell us we'll do. You give us a written law and we'll obey them. And I don't know why they made that promise because they hadn't been keeping the law. But now they said, if you put it in writing, we'll do it. So the Lord gave them this law, or these laws. But what do we mean by the law? Well, we have statutes and laws here, don't we? And I heard of one this week that I hope they, they do away with. And the, the article in the paper was the fact that they intend to do away with the red light cameras throughout the state of Texas. Governor Abbott, one of his platforms he's running on is to do away with the um, red light cameras. They, they, they found that too many people have wrecks trying to stop because of the cameras. And they throw in the brakes. Uh, Linda and I were up at Lufkin here a few days ago. After this article came out in the paper last week, and it was just coming to deluge just pouring. And we came to the light uptown. And it raining like it was. And it, sure, it was green okay. But when I started through it, it turned on me. And it pouring down rain. You couldn't see. So I stepped on my brakes. And I slid all across at the... <laughs> so I may have got my picture made in case you all see it somewhere in the news. <laughs> Means that uh, what about a seventy-five dollar fine? But man has a lot of laws, doesn't he? Now, when I was uh, growing up, there was certain religious cults among us that says, "Thou shalt not go to the movies." Well, I love movies. <laughs> I was a kid, a boy, and one group said, "You can't play dominoes. That's sin." Now, folks, it, it, it sounds silly, but man is silly without, apart from God. Right. Now, I was called on some years ago to a Jewish tabernacle down on the southwest part of Houston to talk to them about having their pictures made for their directory. And I told a lady that had asked me to come over, but all you got to do is let your people put out a sign-up sheet here on your Sabbath, which was Saturday. Put a sign-up sheet and let them sign when they'd like to have the pictures made. And she says, we can't do that. We can't write on the Sabbath. We can't write. As a matter of fact, she said we can't even talk about work on the Sabbath. Our Lord talked about straining in a gnat, didn't he? And swallowing a camel. <laughs> but the, the law is a set of rules to govern his people. And as we read a moment ago, that the law was holy, just, and good. The penalty for breaking the law, in many cases, was that of death. That seems rather severe, didn't it? 
The Lord taught capital punishment. And whether we like it or not, it does not veto what God said. And you take their habitual criminals, that's murderers, they'll continue to do it over and over if they're not stopped. As a matter of fact, the punishment for a homosexual was what? It was death, wasn't it? You would have put them to death. But somebody said, no, we can't, that's too harsh. Well, God was harsh. He knew what he was doing. And I hate to say it, but you keep reading about those priests that abusing little boys and what have you, and they found out it's, it's rampant. That everywhere they go, they're having that problem and destroying those young boys' life. Punishment for that hadn't changed. Our Lord gave the written law. Maybe reluctantly, but he gave it. But let's take an examination of the law for a moment here. Galatians 3 verse 10, where we're at there now. If you, if you look down toward the bottom of your page. For as many as are of the works of, law, of the law are under the curse. For it is written. Cursed is everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law. You can't pick the part of the law you like and say, well, I'll keep those and ignore the others. You just can't do it. I used to illustrate, I'd put my wristwatch off and the days of cell phones is... is done away with wristwatches. But I'd always pull up my wristwatch and ask how many places, how many bands of these you, you got to break for in order for it to be broke. One, of course. You break one law, the Bible says you're guilty of all. But we, when you think of the laws and commandments, One of the laws said, Thou shall not kill. And you and I think at first thing, that's the worst thing a person could do was to kill. And it's wrong to kill. When you, when you get older like myself, you hate to even kill a mosquito. <laughs> because you don't want to take the breath of life from it. But especially did the Lord not want you to murder one of his creations that he made in his image. And remember the law was holy. But we'd all say this morning, I wouldn't kill anybody. And we'd mean it. Because I don't think any of you here today would. And then we come to the, another commandment that says, I shall not commit adultery. Does that go on? Just listen to the news a moment. And you'll find that it does. And I could go on that subject a while, but we'll move on. The Lord said, Thou shalt not steal, did he not? I shall not steal. I mean, take something that's not yours. You wouldn't do that, would you? Then we come down to the one that says, I shall not bear false witness. What's that mean? It means lying. Somebody said, well, I told a little white one. Not in God's eyes. They're all black. They're not white. And don't try to, you know, we, we were kids, we said, well, I had my fingers crossed when I said that. <laughs> yeah. 
but it's wrong to lie in it. But what was the first commandment that was given? To me, if, if you go by what the Lord gave first, you would think it has more significance. The first commandment that God ever gave was, Thou shall have no other gods before me. Folk, when you think of your church life, then think of how many gods you put before church. How many things did you put before them? Well, I've known people that did various things to stay away from the Lord's church. Um, we're all guilty of breaking the first law. We have put idols and what have you ahead of God, material things and so forth. So we're guilty of breaking that first law. Now what's the penalty? Well, the penalty was death. And the Lord said, Secondly, thou shalt not make any graven images like unto me. Oh, images. We all have an image maker today, don't we? Well, all of, everybody has a phone almost nowadays. And they can take a picture of whatever. And images are there, are they not? But I read recently that on the internet there's over 4 million adult sites. I wouldn't call them adult, but that's what they're, how they're referenced. Sex. things going on. Over four million. I don't know who to, tried to top and count them. Folk, that's a lot. It, it's inundated our society. What did the Lord say? Thou shalt not make any graven images. And we do, don't we? Now, that's a sad day. But that's the day we live in. And then the Lord said, Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. I don't like to hear people curse my God. If I speak up, if I'm around a group that's talking that way, either I'll exit or have them to. I hate to hear anybody use God's name in vain. Wrong. And then there was a, a law that we seldom look at. Remember the Sabbath. Keep it holy. Now, we're not under the law, right? But the law was holy, just, and good. The Sabbath meant there had to be a time of rest. Folk, you have to rest so body and mind sometimes. But he said, keep it holy. I've heard people over the years, and they, they didn't mean it, ill will on it, but I'd hear them pray, Lord, thank you for this Sabbath day. It was on Sunday. But the day here was the seventh day, wasn't it? Which would have made it Saturday. But the Lord made the Sabbath for man, not man for the Sabbath. Brother Enrique can tell you about the Seventh Day Adventist, which he was a part of uh, some time ago. How that they uh, are quick to defend the, that day. But I can tell you this much, folks. You need to rest your own mind and body sometimes or another. If you don't, it'll catch up with you. You've got to rest it. 
even the lamb, they would have farm it. How many years? Somebody help me. They would have farmed that land how many years and then let it rest? Six or seven? Within seven years that they would have farmed the land. And then they had to let the land rest to replenish itself. The law was good. It could not save. It only condemned. How many people over the years, and I know we thank the Lord for our soul winners group, but when you start talking to a person that doesn't know the Bible, and you ask them about their relationship with the Lord, and one of the answers is, well, we try to keep the commandments. which is commendable. But the fact is, no one ever kept those commandments but one. And they crucified Him. No one has kept the commandments. But you'll be surprised at how many people think, oh, if you keep the commandments, you got it made. You don't keep them, folks. The law was our schoolmaster. Galatians 3 verse 24 if you will. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ that we might be justified by faith. Folk, through the law comes condemnation. And the curse of death was upon us. Christ paid the curse for us. If you will, look at Galatians 3, verse 13. And get right to the bottom scripture on the page. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. My niece was talking to me the other day about her church and what have you. He said, you know, I don't like it where they said, uh, somebody in her church had said about the tree that our Lord died on. Referencing the cross. And I pointed out to her that our Lord used the scripture here himself. Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. And it was a tree. Now, we are unable to keep the law. Now, that does not destroy the law, but we're not under the law. Neither are we under the curse because he's been made the curse for us. He paid for every sin that you ever committed or will commit in the future. And folks, that's it. You will commit sin, will you not? You won't keep the law because it's impossible for you being born as you were Christ was born differently, wasn't he? He was born of the Virgin Mary, the seed of the woman he's called, not the seed of man. In him did, what did not flow the blood of Adam, the first Adam. And that's why Jesus is called the second Adam. I don't know how God did it, performed it, I don't know how he made us in to start with. But I do know that he was born of the woman, the seed of man. That was the first promise made, wasn't it, in Genesis 3. When man had sinned, God foretold that event. 
that the seed of the woman was going to bruise the head of the serpent. And folk, I'll tell you this much, and I don't take this much more of your time here. There's a number of Bible versions, and I recommend strictly King James. But if you'll pick up a Revised Standard Version, and I have one in my office back here for reference sake, Isaiah 7.14 says, Behold, a young woman shall conceive. They don't believe in the virgin birth. And folk, if you didn't believe in the virgin birth, you can't believe anything. Jesus is who he claimed to be. <coughs> if he's not, we're all in trouble. And I've got up here and I've spoken in vain, haven't I? If he's not the hope. And our, our society has a bunch of ills, folk. We're sliding down the wrong path. You know, to me, if you cut the news on, it's, it's depressing. Because of so many things that's going on. Jesus is still the answer. For all of our needs.